Hey, what's up, Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the brand new 2023 uh, Disney Plus slash Marvel Studios original show, Secret Invasion. So, it's hard to focus because it's just such an unfortunate project. It had good potential. You know, we know that the scrolls have been around for 30 years within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And this is only six episodes long. It's a mini series. That's it. That's all we've got. And then, you know, introduction of new characters and bringing back old characters for then future projects. Fine. But this was so slow and so boring. And it's unfortunate because it had such a high budget. It had great fight scenes, great there was blood everywhere. It was very spy kind of. It was different. It was a different kind of Marvel film. It wasn't superhero. It was more secret agent, spy drama kind of a thing, right? Mixed in with some Marvel, mixed in with some science, of course. But it was just boring. There's certain conversations that characters had, and you're just like looking at the watch, and you're like, is this ending? Like, there's, it's such a halt on the story. It's a halt in the, in the pacing, and it's frustrating. This should have just been a two-hour film and called it a day. That's it. Especially when you have random... 30 minute episodes, random 40 minute episodes. It's just illogical pacing wise for this story, which is a big story, but how it was told, it should have only been two hours as a film, call it a day, that's it. So the scrolls have been on earth in Nick Fury's care, quote unquote, for, uh, for 30 years, right? We were introduced to them in timeline 1995, with the uh, Captain Marvel story, right? Carol Danvers. And so that was the big face-off, right? The scrolls had to leave their planet because it was destroyed from the Kree. And so they've been looking now for a new home. And Nick Fury says, come to Earth. You know, I'll find you a new home. But he realizes that he can't find them a new home. And that the only way to integrate them into, you know, Earth is to make sure that humanity is safe from the alien invader, technically. So he doesn't actually actively look anymore. He's just still giving them the false hope. And he failed them. So now it's a matter of certain scrolls are rebelling against the other scrolls in regards to, all right, well, if they're not going to give us a planet, we'll just take the planet. That's it. And scrolls can change their appearances into individuals, you know, around them. So what political leader, what general in an army, what, you know, figurehead is a scroll or who's actually human so there's a million scrolls you know surrounding the country surrounding the the world and now it's a matter of what happens when you out these people can you out these people what happens when you're trying to integrate these people it's very interesting because they're not actually people they're aliens they are scrolls from another planet so it's a whole will they won't they kill each other it's a whole what's the moral thing to do uh and then it's a matter of this main scroll gravic who I forget the actor's name. He's he's wonderful. He's in Noel. He's in uh, the current Barbie film. He plays a canon Barbie. Awesome, dude. Awesome. And he has an incredible monologue. And his acting is impeccable when it's him and Fury, fake Fury, because it's Gaia, Amelia Clark's character, um, in this laboratory in, in, in this, you know, defunct nuclear power plant in Russia, um, going through this monologue. It was beautiful. That was the best part of the whole, whole thing. Especially, also with... Olivia Coleman's character and uh, Amelia Clark's characters having having moments together. That was great. Certain things were great, but other things were just dumb because it was so slow. So it's a matter of Gravik wants this harvest, which is all the DNA collected from the Battle of Earth uh, when all the Avengers came about at Endgame to fight off Thanos and his crew, and all the blood samples and stuff were collected. So he Gravik wants to make super scrolls to take over the the world and he has some dna but not all the dna and then guy gets a hand on all of the dna by pretending she's nick fury and so she then becomes the super scroll who's now the most powerful being ever but what's the point what are we going to do with that i'm very curious what we're going to do with that now that she has the power of everybody so things right things were just wonky things were weird i like the revelation that uh Rhodey has been a scroll this entire time since his uh accident in uh, Avengers Civil War. So that was he's been a he's been a scroll for 10 years of film wise that we've seen less than 10 years. But uh it, it's it's interesting having certain answers to certain questions 
answered within this, but then new questions devolve and evolve, excuse me, and then other things happen and more characters are introduced and more plot points are revealed. But then like you have Colby Smolder's uh, character of Maria Hill and she's killed. And is she really dead? Is she fake dead? It's just things. It's like, why bring this character for an episode to get rid of them? They've been, in, you know, Maria's been around for what, nine projects or something like that within the MCU. But now that we have the multiverse, are we going to see these characters in other multiverses? It's when you open that multiverse can, possibilities are endless. I'm all for it. Spider-Verse, the amazing Spider-Verse into the Spider-Verse. They do an incredible job with that. But I'm curious how the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to continue with that. Because we had a great introduction of the multiverse within Spider-Man No Way Home with bringing in our three Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and... and Tom Holland. I was going to say Topher Grace. I was like, no, no, no. Topher Grace played, played Eddie Brock, who was a Venom. But now we have Tom Hardy as a Venom. So that's the thing. There's possibilities. And it, it worked very well in Spider-Verse. But I'm curious if um, Spider-Verse, it worked well. No Way Home, it worked well. But I'm curious now that we have so much of a multiverse. Are these dead characters going to be coming back in other multiverses? Possible. Anyway, Secret Invasion six episodes long very unfortunate that's the best summary i can give very unfortunate because it was such a high production value the other thing that really pisses me off is that it was a high production value and they literally used artificial intelligence to make the main sequence and the producers were saying something like they wanted it to be artificial because it didn't it wanted they wanted to give it a creepy non-authentic feel you have such a high production value right now hollywood is striking with actors hollywood is striking with writers and you force a computer to make art when that's the purpose of paying a digital artist. Mind-boggling. So things are things are changing. Good, finally. Production was wonky. Um, unfortunate. You had great talent. Doing the best they could with the material they were given. But this should have been a two-hour film. It should never have been a six-hour, a uh, six-episode mini-series. That's what I've noticed. Pacing was off. So I got no other fun facts. On to the next review. Wish you mahalo.